Inspired by Brady Heron's Deep Sky Video channel, I thought it might be interesting to do a series of videos using my images as the source material and seeing what we might learn either from the images or from other sources. We'll talk a bit about the image and then about the actual target up there in the sky. We're going to start with the Flaming Star Nebula. Now, I can't hear the phrase Flaming Star without my brain seeing the character P.T. Flea from A Bug's Life saying, Flaming Death! Of course, that says more about me than it does about the nebula, but is there flaming death at the flaming star? Before we can answer that, let's take a look at what we're talking about. The Flaming Star Nebula, also known as IC405, Caldwell 31, LBN 795, and Sharpless 229, is an emission and reflection nebula in Auriga. That makes it a great winter target for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. At a declination of 34 degrees north, it passes very nearly directly overhead for a good chunk of the Northern Hemisphere population. It's a large L-shaped nebula. You can see it here framed on Telescopius as I framed it in 2019 with the Stellar View SV80 and the ASI 294 MC Pro. This field of view covers about two degrees by one and a half degrees and the entire nebula fits comfortably inside. Here's my picture from 2019. It's not great. I was fighting with a lot of equipment trouble back then and I was still near the foot of the learning curve, but it's recognizably the flaming star. Wasn't really thinking about revising it, but one of my teammates on the telescope at Sierra Remote Observatory suggested it. My first thought was to vote against it. The field of view on that telescope is a lot smaller, and I wasn't sure it would look very good. But I framed it up, and the bright part of the nebula fit almost perfectly. The extended, long part of the L wouldn't fit, but it was the less interesting part so it seemed like a worthwhile choice. The next question was how to image it, broadband or narrowband? We decided to use all our filters because the nebula has a reflection component that would be lost in a pure narrowband version. Teammates could choose how they wanted to process it. SHO, LRGB, HARGB, or maybe something even more creative. Well, it turned out that the O3 filter didn't show any real signal, so using it was out for final processing. S did have a signal, but it was quite faint. Using it in any meaningful way was beyond my skills. There are a couple of column defects on this CCD that were problematic given the amount of stretching the S master required. I thought I'd opt for HALRGB. As it turned out, I decided not to use the L. For reasons I'm not clear on, it would not combine well with the other data. But as an HARGB image, it turned out great. The conventional way to do this in a purely emission nebula would be to use the H as luminance. That brings out a lot of detail, but in this case it loses the reflection nebula piece, so I ended up using the NRGB combination script to do my combining. That gave me the best of both worlds, detail from the H-alpha and retaining the blue reflection nebula. I was happy with the way this turned out. So what about that flaming death? I wasn't able to find anything definitive about the origin of the name flaming star, but in my interpretation, the reflection nebula coming from the bright star Aeargae, and sorry if I've mangled that pronunciation, give the impression of smoke coming off the star. That could be the source of the name. And that star is a bright O-type star, likely to undergo its own version of flaming death as a supernova eventually. That seems unlikely to have been a factor in the naming of the nebula. However it got the name, it was well chosen. But aside from being a bright O-type star, A.E. Aragay is unusual for another reason. It's a runaway star. It's thought to have been ejected from the area near the trapezium in the Orion Nebula, so it's a long way from its point of origin. 
And while it is the source of energy that causes both the reflection and emission parts of the flaming star, won't be there forever since it's just passing through. Eventually, the nebula will no longer be illuminated, at least to the same degree, unless some other star passes through or forms nearby. A.E. Arage is about 1,320 light-years away, and the nebula is listed as being about 1,500 light-years away, so that star puts out an incredible amount of energy. The chunk of nebula we can see in this image spans about five light years from one side to the other. The image covers about 46 arc minutes of view, making this field of view about one and a half times wider than the full moon. One interesting thing to do is to look at an even wider field for this area. Suddenly, a bunch of other nebulae are visible here, including the tadpoles, another well-known nebula. But, Although we think of these as different nebulae, where do the boundaries of one gas cloud end and where do the others begin? I think it's fair to say that what we think of as separate and distinct nebulae are really part of an extended complex of clouds. Can't say more than that. I don't have enough reference data to do more than speculate. But it sure looks like these are all slightly denser areas in a larger cloud. If anyone has good data on that, let us know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed our brief look at the flaming star and some of what is going on physically out there in the galaxy. Until next time, clear skies.